Well hello folks and welcome back to another video, I hope you're well. So it's been a little while since I've done my last video and the reason being is I've been trying to look around for a property and I've been doing all my research and looking at different places. I've been uh, giving myself a 30 mile radius of Newcastle. I've mainly been looking to the south of Newcastle, towards Durham, um, a little bit towards Middlesbrough, but not too close because apparently it's a really high crime rate there and there's a lot of uh, violence there. So. I've uh, been told to stay clear of that and I've also had some advice from my uh, private driver that I've been ha using to get get around. They're not that much more than a taxi and um, it's nice to build up a rapport with your driver and knowing that you're going to get there on time and he's going to pick you up and start to build up you know, a rapport with them. So currently it's almost 11 o'clock at night and the reason why I want to do this today versus tomorrow is currently I've... Um, put an offer in on a property and I won't know anything until tomorrow. So I still want that sort of anticipation to be in my video because I don't know what is happening and um, if I don't get the property, I really don't know what is next, to be honest. It's, um, yeah, that sort of thing at the moment. The property market right now is getting thinner and thinner. The type of properties that I'm after now, I'm having to spend more and more because there's fewer properties. When I was looking back in um, July time, there were a heap of properties around £1,100 that were suitable for what I wanted. But now, that isn't the case. It's been quite stressful. Not having a hire car to get around really has taken its toll. You know, it's made this whole thing so much longer than it should have been. You know, it should have been probably a week or two trying to look for a property. It's been almost a month. Almost um, two months ago, I left Australia. Just over two months ago is when my stuff got picked up on Friday the 13th. I think today is the 14th of November. Um, I really hope to be in my own place by now, but we're still in accommodation living. And this is um, the inside on the river. So it's quite a nice hotel and it's not too expensive and it's gives me nice comforts as well, which is highly important. So yeah, what I want to go over in this video is um, some of the things I've been looking for in properties, and that is very important to me. And I'll go over some of the things I've also found when it comes to looking at properties, what you see online doesn't always add up um, when you go to see the property, like room sizes, for instance. You see on the website, you go, oh, that rooms are really big. You go there and you go, oh, actually, they're not that big. Um, there were some properties that were very closely imperfect, but just didn't work, which was unfortunate. So yeah, I've got a little list here um, of things that I've jotted down. The first thing is a fast internet connection. I need it for what I do, you know, creating these videos, uploading, I'm going to do video calls and everything, and I need to future-proof myself as well, so I need fast internet. I want something over a thousand megabytes per second. I'm going to be able to download stuff easily, I'm going to be able to upload stuff easily, and um, you know, even when it's on a you know going through a slow period, it's still going to be lightning fast for me, far better than what I had before. And number two, I want a detached property. The reason being is I suffer very badly from my anxiety, and I'm also um, very sensitive to sound and stuff and um, my environment because I've got autism. Um, I'm pretty sure I've got ADHD and dyslexia. Um, but the autism side, I've got to look after that. If I've got noisy neighbours or I'm worried about making noise, you know, like here, I'm talking kind of quietly and I'm hoping no one can hear me. I'm, I haven't heard anyone either side of me where I am right now. If I hear something or I feel like I'm going to be um, being a noisy neighbour or something, you know, maybe I'm watching a movie, listening to music, talking late at night, making my videos like I am now, you know, it's 11 o'clock at night now, and I don't want someone to hear me, and I don't want to be rude, or I don't want to be an inconvenience on other people, so that's my reason for having a detached property, and it's also going to help me with my mental health, uh, being a little bit further away from people, um, which is highly important for me. So if I didn't have my disabilities, then sure, I would go for maybe a flat, or I would go for a, sem a, ter a terrace house, or a semi-detached, so yeah. Anyway, it also needs to be close to shops and transport, so that's number three. Reason for that is since I've got to sell everything, you know, I've got to buy all the, the stuff, you know, 
uh, kitchen appliances. I've got to buy a sofa. I've got to buy you know a TV. You know, I've got to buy a TV. I've got to buy you know those little things that you don't really think about. It's just going to make that that process so much easier. And then in the future, when I need to move, I'll have everything there and I'll be able to do it easily. And it doesn't matter where I'm going to be because I'm going to have all my stuff around me anyway. And I need something as well that's going to be good for the removalists. Um, that's got easy access, uh, heaps of parking, and I'm um, not going to disrupt the area around me. That's the last thing I want to do. And also, since I'm probably not going to get a car straight away, I need to be able to walk to places. I need to be able to get, get um, on the train easily. I need to be able to catch public transport easily. I need to go to the shops and buy things if I need, you know, doing little food shops and getting those essential items. So I can at least start looking after myself and start to have a sense of normality and then maybe wait till the new year and get myself a car. And number four, space between neighbours. So that's sort of the same as thing as having the detached property. Just being able to have that room and not being, I uh, feel like I'm going to be seeing my neighbours a lot. I need something that's going to be also cheap to heat because it's going to be, it's very cold in the north. These houses can get quite cold. So I need something that's going to be very nice and easy to, to heat, that's not going to be expensive. I'm going to make sure I'm not going to use the heating that much. I'm just going to have it on low and use the bare minimum, really, just enough so that I can just keep warm. I don't have to worry about wearing a jumper in the house, and I'll get a bit scientific and do some testing and working out what works best. But luckily with the house I'm looking at, which I'm hoping I'm getting, the boiler on the upper floor, and it's in the centre of the house, and when I went round there... The boiler had been turned off for two weeks and there was no heating in the house whatsoever but as soon as you went upstairs it was lovely and warm so that boiler is going to keep the upper floor nice and warm where, it's, where I'm going to spend most of my time and then just have a little bit of heating down below and it's quite a small house anyway. Free bed, two bath, uh, no hang on, free bed, free bath but yeah it's, it's small. Number six, enough room for my stuff. I didn't realise how much stuff I've got. Um, you know, when I left Australia, I just wanted, I thought I'd easily be able to fit a lot of my stuff into the house. And, you know, there's things now I wish I didn't bring. My rooftop tent, for one. Um, some of the tools that I've bought with me and some of the other camping supplies I've bought with me. Um, because it's meant that I have to be looking for certain properties. I can't store a rooftop tent in the house. I've got to store it in a shed or a garage. But a garage is going to be the best place because the shed can get damp and mouldy and I don't want my rooftop to get mouldy and all my other camping supplies. I've got a lot of camera gear. I've got just a small amount right now with me as I'm travelling around. Um, but I've got, yeah, what, five cameras, 11, 12 lenses, whatever. I think I've got more now um, since I've been buying stuff when I've been since I've arrived in England. Yeah, I've got two um, printers. I've got an A3 Plus printer and I've got an A2 printer. They take out a lot of room. I've got a huge desk um, and tables and everything and humidity control cabinet f for my gear so it's all nice and safe. I'm going to also have a little corner where I can just sit down and do my little uh, talks on the camera and also have it where I can do like some little studio stuff, you know, some strobe stuff so I can set it up in the office and yeah. So I need, need the room and this next house is very suitable for that. But yeah, I need a um, minimum of three bedrooms. One being a bedroom. I don't want a load of clutter in there. So yeah, a nice room that's going to be not minimalistic in there. Two, a spare room for all the shit that I've got that just won't go in the office. You know, my camping stuff, some tools. And if I look at creating a online store, I could keep some stuff I'm going to sell in that room. So yeah, I could use it as storage because... The house isn't just a home, it's an office for me, it's a, a, way, a, a place where I can operate from. And also with the garage thing, I need it so I can work on the car, because I don't plan on taking my car to a garage to get you know, a service done, or if it needs any major work, then I can do it at the house. Um, of course, if it needs any real major work, like engine work, then I'll take it to a specialist. A lot of the stuff that I want to do, I want to keep it all at the house and... You know, make the most of the property. Also having a uh, private garden, so I'm not overlooked, that means number eight. I've seen a lot of properties where you you basically overlooked by the neighbours or you can easily see the neighbours. Um, I don't want that. I want to be able to go out in the garden, do my videos, because I will do videos out in the garden, not feel like I'm 
drawing attention to myself. I don't like that. Need a place that's going to be safe and secure. This is number nine. Reason being is there's be, there'll be times when I'm away from the house uh, two to three weeks at a time, quite possibly in the future when it comes to running workshops all around the world. Um, when it comes to doing business meetings, I need to make sure it's secure. I don't want to be worrying about is the house safe? Is it going to get broken into? That's highly important for me. And it would also affect my insurance premiums. You know, if I'm living in a bad area, my insurance premiums are going to be high because it's a higher risk. I want to be peace of mind that everything's going to be fine um, if I'm away or I'm tucked away from the main road. So, yeah, no one's going to really have easy access and try and think like a criminal. They take the easiest way, and if they see an easy target, they will go for it. And, you know, if I've got stuff that gets sent to me as well, I don't want it to sit out the front for very long or... Yeah, I might get some sort of um, letterbox, big metal thing, sit out the front so parcels can get disposed into that. And then that way it's not sitting on my um, doorstep getting wet as well. Close to walks and trails, and that's a highly important thing for me. One day I might just go, oh, you know what, I'll go for a walk from my place. I know there is a, a few trails near where I'm looking at this place. So that way I can just wake up in the morning going, you know what, I feel like going for a nice walk or uh, going for a bike ride somewhere. I don't have to drive somewhere and that inconvenience. And, you know, what if it's snowing or what if there's ice on the road and I can't get around? If I can just get to a nice little trail and park and go for a walk or a ride, then that'd be fantastic. And easy to maintain gardens as well. I've uh, seen properties um, that I've looked at which have been really big. Um, they've got really lovely and mature gardens. But obviously that comes with a lot of maintenance and upkeep. Um, now if I'm away from the house for a long period of time or if I'm getting pain or something, then I've got to, you know, put a lot of time and effort into the, keeping that nice. Or I've got to pay for a gardener to, you know, come around once a week to tidy things up and that's going to cost me more money. So yeah, I want something that's nice and easy to maintain. Carpets in most rooms, just mainly for soundproofing and insulation, really. And when I'm listening to music, it will just minimise the echoing in the house and it will just bring it right down, so that would be quite nice. I like a bit walking on carpet, I don't like hard hardwood floors. Um, I do like solid wood floors, but yeah, I just find they're a bit cold. Um, carpet is always a bit more warming. Um, but I know when it comes to you know moving into a property that has got carpet, I will uh, clean it myself. I'll buy a wet vac and uh, clean the carpets myself and put some nice uh, chemicals into it so it smells nice as well. Uh, the last thing I want to do is smell the original tenants who might have had dogs or cats or, you know, never know uh, what goes on on those carpets. Minimal decoration required as well. There's been a lot of properties which have had um, kids' um, decorations in or really bold colours, uh, greens, oranges, reds, purples. Um, which would mean that I'd have to go into the place and redecorate it before I actually, you know, my stuff arrives. Um, so, yeah, not ideal. So I've seen properties where I've gone, oh, I really like that, but then I'd have like the interior. And there's also been storage solutions where, you know, um, you know, back in the 90s you'd have, and also early 2000s you'd have the, the bed and then the cupboards all around it. Now, um, for me, that just basically says, no, I can't use that room because it limits the way I can use it. And that's basically it, really. Um, so yeah, what I have been doing um, when it comes to properties, I've been getting a little bit desperate. I looked at some really expensive properties around £2,200. Since I've got a bit more re knowledge on properties and what things go for, I go to these properties and I go, you know what, it's not worth this. Um, I think it's mainly due to the area. There was one property which I viewed, which was 2,200. It was a, a nice cottage. Um, it was in quite a lucrative area where footballers and stuff are, but that was the property for 2,200 pounds. Um, it had a huge garden. It was going to be lovely and quiet and secluded, um, private, but, and nice big driveway, garage and everything, but it needed work, and the, and the owner wasn't really keen on doing much work to it. Also, a lot of the furniture was going to be staying in the place. I said, what about removing it and putting it in storage? He said he'd rather not. The thing I could do is put it in one of the rooms or buy the furniture off of him and then and then scrap it, which is not really something that I want to do. And it's just additional expense, additional 
headache, but it would have been a lovely property, but definitely not worth it. I think if it was anywhere else, it was in the country, and it wasn't in a lucra such a lucrative area. And by the way, the lucrative area didn't draw me to it. It was the house that drew me to it. I think if it was anywhere else, it'd be 800 to 900 pounds a month if it was in the country. So, yeah, it was just the an extra 1,300 pounds um, just because of where it was, and that wasn't worthwhile for me. So, yeah, it's nice going being able to go around to places and working out what I need and what I don't need and, and sort of is it too much or is it not. Like the property I'm looking at now, um, I'm not going to mention the price, but is it a lot cheaper than the other place? I just mentioned I can see that being worth what it is it's maybe a couple hundred pounds less but due to my circumstances I don't really have many other options so I've got to go for this and yeah so it's difficult but you know this property is going to do me for 12 months and then after that I'll uh, when I'm doing really well and everything then I'll uh, move to a different place uh, where I'll rent for a while uh, before buying a place so yeah Anyway, I think that's everything. I'll be able to update you on what happens with this property tomorrow. I'll, that'll be in the next vlog. Um, and I'll try and keep you updated on what's going on. But yeah, I just I didn't want to make a load of videos about me looking for properties. and, and Because I did one and it didn't work and it wasn't going to work. And it was also just not going to really make sense. I wanted it to make sense. But also, a lot of the write-ups for the properties haven't been clear. The agents have been haven't been the best one agent I was pestering to try and hear back from them and they wouldn't get back to me and it was really annoying and I was thinking if I had any problems if I did go through a rental with them and I was persistent with it what if I had a problem with the rental later on how would that go and then I looked up on reviews about the real estate agent and it was not good uh, for the lettings part so yeah I ended up um, messaging a couple of people seeing should I bail on this one it was a lovely property it would have really worked nicely and it was within budget sometimes if the agents aren't doing their job and they're not pulling their way and they're not getting back to you it doesn't feel your confidence so you'll look elsewhere and um, I feel sorry for the landlord because he's not making any money he's losing money right now it's been on the market for about two or three months and no one seems to have taken it anyway I'm going to finish it here yeah I'll update you in the next one these are I, I don't like making these sort of videos, as I've mentioned in the past. Uh, it's just, um, I feel pressured uh, to say stuff. And everything I do say, I don't have a script, you know. This is the biggest script I've ever had. Dot points on what I want to bring up. I've got a bit of a cold right now, so I'm a bit run down, as you might be here. I've got a really sore throat, so talking is not great for me at the moment. And it's really not doing a, good, a great thing for me. I hope I get this place. If I don't, I don't, it is what it is, and I need to just work out what to do. The last thing I want to do though is spend Christmas in a hotel, and it's just going to be incredibly expensive. I'm going to go through so much money um, because it's not cheap. Um, so, yeah, maybe some short term rental, a short term holiday park, I don't know, but they, they're not cheap either. They're expensive. I need to look into other options, but I really hope I get this place because. It means I can start to have a life again. Um, I do miss that, you know, being able to cook, being able to do the simplest of things, do your washing. I like having my own space and I like being able to look after myself. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to head off and I will see all of you in the next one. Okay, bye for now and take care. And if you've got any questions, pop it down in the comment section and I'll do my very best to get back to you. Okay, bye everyone. Take care.